normal reaction time is somewhere around 15 frames, give or take. Faust's forward heavy slash has to be blocked high, but since it has a 25 frame startup, this means you can always react and block it correctly. It's Stephen Hawking! Oh, Six of it! Nage! Nage! It does it! Nage takes it! Evo Japan, the first inaugural champion! Nage, using your exit revelator tool! Alright, obviously there's more to it than that, so let's dive a little deeper. The startup time for a move doesn't tell you the whole story. It only tells you how much time will pass between when the button is pressed and when the thing happens. If you can't see the move, you can't react. What really matters is how soon you can differentiate the move you're looking for from all the other things the character could possibly be doing. For example, Magneto can jump and quickly dash down at you and go for an air attack that has to be blocked high. This seems pretty easy to see until you realize he can fake it and go for a low attack instead. By the time you can clearly tell which one Magneto did, it's probably too late. Another thing to consider is what you're trying to react with. The theoretical 15 frame average reaction time is how quickly you can react to something in a simple binary way, like switching from crouch blocking to stand blocking. If you want to react with something requiring a more complex input, you have to take into account how fast it takes you to physically input the move. On top of that, you have to consider how long it takes the move you're trying to react with to start up. Back in 2012, Michael Kayan O'Reilly, aka the maker of I Wanna Be The Guy, aka that game that'll make you hate yourself, wrote an article about a concept he referred to as the mental stack. The idea of the mental stack is that reacting in fighting games seems hard at first because you don't know the game, so you have no idea what to look for or focus on. If you're trying to react to a hundred different things, you're trying to do the impossible. As you gain experience, you'll realize that there are lots of situations where the opposing character only has two or three moves that actually matter. For example, from around a character length away, Ryu could throw a fireball, he could jump at me, and that's kind of it. If I know that, I can focus on just those two things. If he throws a fireball, I can go under it, and if he jumps, I can anti-air him. When you only have to look for a few things and know you can safely ignore everything else, it's easier to react and the game almost feels slower. It's a lot more manageable. While raw reaction time is a fixed thing that you can't do a whole lot to improve, knowledge and experience will help you narrow your focus, which will let you functionally react to things faster. Knowing which moves actually matter at a given moment applies to your character as well. In the Ryu example, I'm ignoring almost my entire moveset. My hands and my brain only need to be ready to press one of these two buttons. A beginner might find themselves in this situation and think they need to be worried about every possible move out there. When you know what to look for, it gets a lot easier. Going along with this, as much as you can, you should be doing your problem solving in advance. If you find yourself in the middle of a match thinking, what do I do about fireballs? Things probably aren't going well. You should be thinking, Ryu can throw fireballs, I have a move that beats fireballs, if Ryu does a fireball, I'll do that move. The more you can anticipate and plan for, the more of your brain you can free up to do other things. So what's the take home message? First off, this isn't easy. Nage took out Omito and won Evo Japan with a move that starts up in 25 frames. Even when you're a pro, there are situations where it's tough to know where to focus and what to try and react to. The main thing to remember is that good reaction times really means good at focusing on what matters and ignoring everything else, which is absolutely something you can and will get better at over time. Thanks as always for watching. If you want to keep up with what I'm working on or you're interested in showing your support, here's where to go. See you next time.